That's okay. When I let her in. When I see her, I let her in. So I'm going to provide um, some direction on uh, holding the virtual meeting before we do roll call and get started. Um, I'm Sherry Riedemann, the city clerk. Um, and again, these are just a few reminders to ensure that the provisions of the Kansas Open Meetings Act are met while we hold the meeting virtually. Um, each of the members of the board need to make sure that they state their name and title each time they speak. All motions will need to be stated clearly. After a motion is made and seconded, the chair will call on each board member individually to provide their vote. Um, the chair will then need to announce whether the motion carried and the count of the vote. Um, there are a few members of city staff present via Zoom and uh, they must also state their name and title each time they speak. Um, any individuals who are attending the meeting um, to provide public comment or presentations rem remotely will also be called upon by name and need to make sure that they state their name and their name before they provide comment. And that is it. I'll turn it over to the chair. He's muted. Talking on mute, sorry. Paula Schumacher, chair, the first item we have is to approve the minutes from our last meeting. Does anybody, um, there's a link or if you've gotten it, has everybody had a chance to look over it? Sir, um, any discussion on this? Lena Miller, board member, um, I reviewed them again to refresh myself this morning and I don't have any questions, thoughts or concerns. I think we would need, a, if nobody has any changes, then I think we would need a motion to approve them as they stand. Galena Miller, board member, I will go ahead and make a motion to approve our minutes as they stand. <laughs> Do we have a second? Marta Schwartz, vice chair, I second. All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? Raise your hand. The motion carries four to zero. Okay. Let's see, the next order of business is public comment. Do we have any public comment from um, online or in person at the office? Uh, Sherry Riedemann, City Clerk, we do not, we did not have anyone register to provide public comment, and there isn't anyone um, here that wishes to provide public comment. I also just want to provide a reminder, Chair, that you will need to call on each board member by name, um, last or first name, and they will need to state I out loud for every motion. It's not every oh. attending can see the meeting, so they can see Okay, the okay, meeting. very good. Thank you, all right. All right, the next uh, order of business is the agenda items. The first item is receive update from Holly Krebs on the state regulation of body work. Holly Krebs is here. Holly, would you please provide your update? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm Holly Krebs. I'm a certified rolfer in Lawrence, um, and I know um, some of you, and it's nice to see your faces again. Um, thank you for having me, and I'm glad to just give an update about what's going on um, at the state level. Um, and to give a little bit of background, um, I know that many of you know um, some of the history in Kansas, but I, I thought I'd provide just a little bit of context if you're not familiar with it, that Kansas currently doesn't have any regulations for massage therapists. Um, they're one of only three or four states uh, where that's the case. Um, the <clears throat> There have been regulations proposed um, multiple times over the last 20 years, and there has not been movement at the state level for a variety of reasons. Um, the American Massage Therapy Association is the current organization that is proposing massage therapy regulation at the state level. There has been um, 
uh, resistance from some legislat legislators, um, even specifically just being against regulating business as a as a broad uh, philosophical uh, stance. So the one of the committees that would be most likely to hear the massage therapy regulation bill, the current chair is against um, business regulation and has been unwilling to um, uh, schedule a hearing for the bill um, at least this last year or two. Um, I was going to say one other thing about um, the state legislature. Um, anyway, so in the last three years, um, the American Massage Therapy Association has proposed a bill that's pretty similar to what has been proposed on and off over the last 20 years. Um, there have been slight modifications with each passing year, um, and I, there's not enough documentation for me to know if those, those modifications are based on public comment, on discussion amongst legislators, if or if there are changes that have been made at the revisor's office level, which are like the, the legal staff who review the legis um, legislation and um, revise it as is needed. In the, through those years, um, especially in the past few years, there's been a move to remove the exemptions that have been in the previous bills that would exempt some number of body workers from um, the, the massage therapy regulations, but then in removing those exemptions without any inclusion of them in a different the reason that I have gotten involved because I'm a certified rolfer and the um, regulations that's been proposed for the last three years doesn't exempt my profession, but also doesn't include it. And so if the bill were to pass, the last year's bill were to have passed, that I would have had to have a massage therapy license in order to practice structural integration, even though I have a, a distinct um, and an individual training. So, um, as, as many of you know, that um, human trafficking has been more and more of an issue in the state of Kansas and that across the nation, um, there are moves to be more stringent in massage therapy licensing so it is clear who are legitimate practitioners and who are being used as, you know, what businesses are being used as fronts for human trafficking. Um, this is one of the reasons that there is more push to um, license massage therapists in Kansas than there has been in the past. There's more interest from the legislature than there has been. Um, because of that, cities across the state have implemented uh, regulations just like Lawrence did several years ago. Um, and as you guys know that when we did our Lawrence regulations, as we were able to educate um, the the city government about the broader field of body work, they were amenable to um, licensing a larger group of people, not just massage therapists, but also structural integration practitioners, as well as some others. Um, so it's nice to have Lawrence as a model, although that doesn't necessarily hold a lot of weight at the state level, um, just because of the, the um, conservative nature of the rest of the state compared to Lawrence. So. I have, I brought up the issue to the American Massage Therapy Association over the last two years that the bill as it was presented would make my job um, illegal, but, um, but in, in, if I were to be included in the exemptions, then it just creates loopholes for human traffickers. So, <clears throat> The AMTA com, um, continually dismissed me over the last couple of years um, and didn't make any changes to their bill in any ways. Um, and so what I've done at this point in time is I had written amendments to their previous bills that would license not only massage therapists, but would also license Asian bodywork therapists, reflexologists, and structural integrators. Um, for, this, um, for this next session, because the the bills died in the previous years. Um, what I have what I have written, although I'll talk about how I might make use of this. What I have written is a fresh bill that is a massage therapy and body work therapy licensing bill that includes all four of those categories 
as well as a possibility for other types of body workers to apply to be recognized um, by the city or by the state. Um, so through this process, one of the people, one of the groups that I've been talking to with consistency over the last two years has been the, the state's attorney general's office has a human traffic advisory board. And I just have to say, bless these people and the work that they do. Um, it's a, it's a relatively large group, um, somewhere between 30 and 40 professionals, um, across the state of Kansas who are made up of people from the attorney general's office, um, from KBI and the FBI. Um, so a lot of different law enforcement, you know, sheriff associations, police departments, but then a lot of victim services um, people as well. And I don't know necessarily their different organizations, but a lot of people who are supporting um, victims of human trafficking as they're trying to get out of that and to set up their lives um, and, and to establish some sense of safety in their life. Um, so it's a, it's a broad organization and I, I really appreciate you know, as I've learned more about them, you know, I, I feel like we're really lucky in Kansas to have them doing the good work that they're doing. So they had expressed interest in supporting the massage therapy regulations last year. And so I have attended multiple of their meetings over the last year and have been educating them much in the same way that we did with the, with the city government about the broader field of body work. Um, and they, they are appreciative of what I've I've taught them and a couple of the things that I've been pointing out are that Asian body work therapy and reflexology are two additional body work fields that are also used as fronts for human trafficking. So if you just um, license massage therapists, but you don't address those other two um, fields that you really leave some pretty major loopholes in the, in the licensing. Um, so they are, they understand and are supportive of the idea of licensing multiple forms of body work, but um, the major hang up is that the American Massage Therapy Association is not um, willing to support um, global uh, licensure that they and they're pretty unmovable on this on this um, stance. I had an, um, a nice and long conversation with their primary legislative um, liaison. Uh, her name is Christine Hooper, and she actually happens to live in the Kansas City area. Um, and her main stance is that, and, and I'm sure that there are other reasons, but we had an hour long conversation. And the main thing that she said with regularity is that she felt like asking the legislature to regulate multiple professions under one bill was too complicated and there wasn't a lot of precedence for it. And so their concern is that they, they're trying to get massage therapy licensed in all states so that it is better recognized um, as a profession and might open up the door for insurance to cover massage therapy with more regularity. So I, I really understand their desire to get licensed for that reason. And I also understand that they are hesitant about um, expanding the scope of the bill because they're really focused on that particular goal. Um, so through this process, I have also been in communications with a larger group called the Federation of Movement for organization is um, has a, uh, a governmental regulation committee that has representatives from all of these different fields who meet together to try and coordinate what's going on at a state level, which is which is really nice. So they have um, uh, there's structural integrators and the Asian body work community, the American Massage Therapy Association, and a whole bunch of the movement practices like Feldenkrais, Traeger. Um, I think they have biodynamic craniosacral. So it's a nice national umbrella organization to be able to have some of these discussions. So I've been in communication with these groups and it's it kind of comes down to the same things that I, the Asian Body Work Association is fine with being regulated, the structural integration community is fine with being regulated, and the reflexology community have all given me their blessings on the language that I have developed, but the American Massage Therapy Association um, is not willing to support it. So that kind of brings us to like what's happening right now. So the 
Massage, the American Massage Therapy Association has amended their current, their, their bill from last year to add some exemptions back in for Asian body work therapy and structural integration. And it has reflexology um, exempted as well. So on one hand, they have asked me to not fight it because they feel like the best chance of getting massage therapy regulated is if we don't ask for multiple regulations. And because I've been participating in this umbrella organization and their discussions and their, their stances that they try to support the goals of the different organizations within that, um, they all they all want to support the AMTA getting what they need as long as everybody else can still practice. And the way that they have done this for years is by giving exemptions to the other, other fields. Um, I pointed out several times that the reason that this is a different discussion is because we don't have any type of regulation in Kansas and that human trafficking, the human trafficking issue is kind of rising to the surface across the nation. And so we're just at an interesting crossroads of all of those components coming together in, in, one, in one fell swoop. Um, so AMTA is proposing a bill that has exemptions that would allow those of us who are not licensed to continue practicing. I have a bill that proposes regulating everyone. And one last option that was brought up in the last, um, the last meeting that we had with that umbrella organization was what would be the possibility of maintaining the exemptions in the massage therapy bill, but requiring that anybody who practices an exempted profession have to register with the state which might be a sufficient solution in that it would get the massage therapy community licensed and, and allow them to have all of the legislative structure that they want to in order to elevate their, their profession and have, it, and have it recognized as a state level. It would allow the other body work professions to continue to practice but, would, but it would also give some sort of documentation at the state level that law enforcement could reference to know if someone practicing one of those exempted professions was a legitimate practitioner or not. Um, so that last suggestion has only just been brought up within the last couple of weeks. And I don't have, so I don't have any sort of language put together to make a suggestion for that. But um, it, it's the only solution that I've seen so far that might make AMTA happy and actually address the other issues at hand. And, and I don't know for sure that that's the case, but it does give us a third option on the table. So at this point in time, um, AMTA's bill is um, at the reviser's office. I'm taking my bill to the reviser's office at the state level so that it can be, um, so that it can be ready if needed. Um, what I've told AMTA is that if the exemptions don't stay in the bill through the process, bill is more comprehensive. So they, they know what I've done, they've seen my bill, um, and that they're aware that it will be ready. Um, and so my hope is that they will support whatever is the best option <laughs> for making sure that we can all continue to practice. Um, and then, like I said, there's this third option of a registry for the exempted professions, uh, which hasn't been thoroughly explored or flushed out yet, but as I said, might be an amenable solution to meet everyone's needs. So I kind of think that brings you up um, to speed. I think that brings you up to speed for this point in time. Wow. I'd be happy to take questions and I, I would love, you know, discussion and um, I would like to know what the committee members thoughts are on the whole, on the whole issue. And um, on one hand, thinking about, I, I know here, um, I believe it was the city manager sent a really nice letter, um, both in support of licensing massage therapy at the state level, but also uh, mentioned that Lawrence had done a broader um, comprehensive regulation and that they supported that idea too. So I know that 
that the discussion of how this group can be involved in um, that process. Um, I'm sure that there are specific regulations um, and, and agreements about how you can participate as a group and how you can participate as individuals. So I don't, I don't know exactly what those um, regulations are, but we, we may want to talk about what you guys could do if you had a stance that you wanted to send a message to the state in some capacity. Thank you, Holly. Um, I guess I open up the floor for any conversation. If anybody wants to make comments, uh, remember to introduce yourself uh, like this Paula Schumacher chair. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Galena Miller, um, board member. Um, first, Holly, I want to thank you for coming and speaking with us today. I appreciate your update. Um, I guess I need I'm a little confused on a few things, and so I just want you to help me with some clarification um, and making sure, you know me, I'm a fact-based person, um, so I just want to make sure I have all the facts in front of me. Um, I guess my first thing is, um, have you been hired or asked by the city to just come and give this update, or were, did you just come here to give us an update? Um, I have a reason why I'm asking, and I'll get to that in a second. I just wanted to hear. Um, no, I'm a volunteer for all okay. of the work that I've done on this front. Oh, for sure. And I appreciate your work on it. And um, the reason why I ask, I guess, to my point is um, I'm really just trying to determine on what's being asked, I guess, of this board and how um, we can kind of help and things like that. Um, if the city is asking you to be here, and that was why I asked specifically about the city, is because then they may be looking for something specifically from us, maybe a recommendation or something to that effect. So I guess that was the main reason I asked about the city, um, seeing what they may specifically sure. be looking just, for. Just for us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just to clarify, um, and Allison, I don't even remember how exactly we uh, communicated about it, but I was mentioning uh, the city or the state um, issue at, at some level. And Allison just suggested that she thought that this board would appreciate being kept up to date with what's going on at the state level um, in, in any form, you know, just in the fact that it may affect this board's future. And um, I, again, that you guys may or may not wish to be involved um, with what's going on at the state level. Sure, or can be involved with what's going on with the state level as city board members, because we are the city of Lawrence board members, not so much, because we really wouldn't have any authority um, for state or anything like that. And really we're at the city's directive or, you know, in their directive, which is again, why I asked about the city specifically. Um, because I just want to make sure if they have a directive and are looking for something for recommendations. I know personally, I would love to have the bill, whether the revised language or anything like that in front of me before I even begin to make a recommendation on anything. If that was something that they so choose, or even yours, I know that you said that you have your own too. Um, I know that would be extremely helpful for me. Um, another thing is it's like, for us, it's like even until the bill really becomes law, we can't really effectively make any decisions or recommendations because it's all just purely speculation. So I don't know. I don't know if this may be more advantageous for the city commissioners to hear. Um, please don't get me wrong. I appreciate your update. I just, again, it kind of goes back to I don't, I just want to make sure and see what's being asked of us, I guess. It's just mainly more of my point. So. Sorry, that was all I had to say for the moment. Sure, <laughs> and, and I'll just um, clarify at the end that while I did say that you guys may want to, um, you know, take some action in some form, either as individuals or as a board, or that the city may want to provide some support for, um, for a bill um, at the state level, um, my intention of coming before you was not to ask something of this board, but in order to just update you and keep you apprised of the situation that's going on at the state level that may affect um, this board, uh, Lawrence licensing. Okay, no, I, I really appreciate it. Um, Sherry and Eliza, have we, and 
have we invited American Massage Therapy Association to come and speak with us or do we, I mean, at this point, I don't. Well, I appreciate an update on um, what's going on with state regulation. Um, I don't know that that's something this board needs to hear other than maybe personally in meetings or things like that as um, like outside meetings that's, or how to kind of really handle that. I just don't know that that's until we can really do anything further, um, whether there be licensing or something like that statewide on what we can really do as a board. I'm just trying to, you know, we're, we're a new board and I'm trying to be careful on how we move about handling some of this and hearing some of this, so. This is Sherry Riedemann, City Clerk. Um, so uh, Ms. Krebs, I believe, had reached out to us about providing an update and we do not keep action minutes, so I would have to refer back to um, meetings before we were recording them, but there had been some discussion at previous meetings about where things were on the state level. And so, and she was involved, uh, very much involved in the drafting of our current um, code. And so we went ahead and put that on an agenda um, for today for her to present to you, which you know any member of the public can request. So since it was something, uh, typically we would, um, at, you know, the board adds items to an agenda, but since it was something that had been discussed in a previous meeting, the interest in getting an update, we went ahead and added it to this agenda. Um, I would say that you are correct that this is an advisory board to the city commission and primarily um, an advisory board to the city clerk in terms of the licensure and how we implement this and making recommendations um, on updates to the code. Having said that, the, the city commission does, or the city does um, put forth a legislative priority statement um, each year. And so um, it wouldn't be out of the scope of this board if they wanted to make a recommendation again or some sort of statement to the commission that they would like to see something regarding this on that legislative priority statement. It does not mean that it would be included, but it wouldn't be out of the scope to make such a recommendation if you if you chose to. But, but again, this board would not be acting on any legislative priorities on its own. Um, Paula Schumacher, Chair. Sherry, um, that really interests me, uh, and, and uh, everybody else can just jump in. Um, I'm not at community at large, so I'm not a massage therapist. But the legislative priority statement sounds very interesting to me as far as being able to move forward um, something that might be a really good idea that we're trying to affect on a, on a higher level, even though we're small. I mean, I know that, you know, when recycling first started, you know, it was just very small, disparate communities until it really got a groundswell. And now we see it in almost every city, you know, and, and state. And if we wanted, if we felt like this was a good idea, which it seems we do since we have it in our community and um, it, it would help, you know, reduce human trafficking, I'd be very interested in, in and coming up with something for the legislative priority statement. I know that might be more work. We'd probably have to look at what Holly has written and decide, you know, which way we want to move on it or just generically. I'm not sure what steps we'd take forward and maybe, Sherry, you could direct us. But I think first I'd want to know from um, everybody else if they'd be interested in doing something like that or not. I know we'd have to, you know, agree on what we recommended, so. Marta Schwartz, Vice Chair. Holly, what was the organization? Um, I I didn't quite hear the last part of it. It was the uh, something Federation of Movement, something. What what is the rest of that? Right. So th this is um, Holly Krebs. Um, this is the umbrella organization for a lot of different um, bodywork professions. It's called the Federation of movement, body work, and some practices and organizations. And somatic. It's quite a mouthful. They, they, and organizations. They abbreviate it. Their acronym is FED 
MBS. Okay. So if you look for them online, you can find them that way. <clears throat> Given um, Paula's last comment, I thought I would um, pass on um, some information from the Human Trafficking Advisory Board and the way that they are considering um, handling this as well. Um, so last year, they voted to support the massage therapy bill as it stood, but to also recommend to the legislature that licensing of work professions would be preferred for them. And similarly, at the meeting that I just attended yesterday of their legislative committee, they they proposed the possibility of a similar thing that on one hand, they're, they're having difficulty parsing out the details. Their, their point was, while we're interested in human trafficking, there's a lot of other stakeholders here and a lot of other variables that are being considered. So they also feel that it would be very reasonable to have all bodywork professions licensed, but they they might not, they don't, kind of like Galena said, they don't have enough details about the AMTA's bill for the upcoming legislative cycle to be able to take a specific action at this point in time. So they considered, as Paula kind of mentioned, the possibility of a more generic statement of, of saying that they, they um, support and recommend the licensure of massage therapists and the licensure of these other um, of these other professions. So um, to to both Galena's point about not having all of the details of um, the the bills before her, which I'm happy to share and I can send information your way, but that there's also a possibility of not necessarily having to um, have the legislative priority be support for a specific bill, but rather the support is for a general goal that they would like to see come out of whatever policy is developed. Galena Miller, board member, um, I think that if we were to even entertain trying to even build up a statement or anything, we may need to hear. I appreciate Holly and her, you know, as a community member coming to us with her update and things like that, but we may need to do our due diligence and hearing from maybe those that are sponsoring the bill or AMTA or some other things, or at least having something in front of us, I think before it even, even if, I mean, even as a general statement, and as we all know, we all personally do not agree on certain things and as part of issues and stuff like that, and we may not. So I know personally, I do um, work on this. I don't know how comfortable, to be frank, how I would feel as a board unless we came together as and figuring out proper steps and guidelines on how we were to lay that out and putting out a general or as a statement together as a collective. Um, not, I'm not opposed to that. I'm definitely interested in entertaining it. I just don't, I just want to be very careful on how we do that because as coming together as a collective, then that becomes one voice that obviously could carry more weight than one, but still one. Um, I just want to be careful on how we do that. So um, yeah, I guess that's all I had to say on that. Sorry. <laughs> Paula Schumacher Chair. So uh, Marta and Allison, do either of you feel uh, like moving in this direction or, or not? Um, and I'd say, Galena, that makes perfect sense to me. That does. Marta Schwartz, Vice Chair. Um, I think I'm, I really appreciate knowing how everything is moving in the state because it will affect our city. And since we have people that come to us and ask us questions. Um, it's important to know how things are moving um, through the, our city and through the state. So I really appreciate being, not being in the dark of all these issues and knowing what, what is happening and what, um, so, so I think it's important and obviously there's, um, I don't feel like anybody's asking me to do anything but listen and and just be aware, and I really appreciate this update. So, so I think uh, 
I would be interested in knowing more information. Uh, so I'm glad, Holly, that you spelled it out so beautifully about what's going on and who the players are and, and how this has all come together. And I think it's something that um, down the line we might have to look at. Um, so, and however that happens, I'm, I'm willing to, um, just as, as we were all willing to get um, the ordinance going, I'm willing to help where is needed. So I'm very interested in this overall. Allison Dishinger, board member, and Holly, I'm really glad that you're here today because it was a good, clear, concise overview of a lot of different things that are happening at the state level that I wouldn't have known about. As far as uh, you know, being informed, I think it's important for us as a as a an advisory board to the city clerk and to the commission regarding licensure that we know what is happening at the higher level that might make us obsolete. So I appreciate you know, being up to speed about this and I appreciate learning about the different reasons why certain organizations don't want umbrella uh, coverage like we have in Lawrence or like we work to get in Lawrence. So that was a fascinating um, piece of it. And I think if I don't know much about what a legislative priority statement is, however, I would be willing to uh, as experts in the field and as an advisory to the city, uh, possibly look at making a general statement saying, yeah, state licensure, we're for it. But I don't, you know, if we could come to consensus on that, not saying like, oh, so-and-so's bill is great and so-and-so's bill is terrible, not being partisan in that way. Um, because I know that the ordinance that we originally have produced here in Lawrence was for a number of reasons, but uh, it was because there is a lack of state licensure in Kansas. So we wanted to have an ordinance where we could prove uh, people are legitimately practicing in Lawrence. So, and I believe it would be much easier on the city if that was regulated at the state eventually. So. Thank you for giving us that update. It was fascinating. Paula Schumacher, Chair. Um, Sherry, is it something we could ask you to do to maybe in an, a future meeting give us examples or tell us a little bit more about what's entailed in a legislative priority statement? I mean, so we don't just jump into something not knowing how big or small it is or how vague or how precise it must be. Sherry Riedemann, City Clerk. So recently, um, uh, our city attorney's office generally coordinates this and then it's presented to the governing body and then they obviously make changes to that. Um, so um, it really can be as simple as you all, you know, making a motion to you know make some type of recommendation to the commission to include something about this in their legislative priority statement it doesn't and that would just take a majority of the individuals voting to do that and then um you know that would be forwarded to the commission that this board made a motion to ask that the commission can include this on their legislative priority statement Paula Schumacher, Chair. I guess, Sherry, I, I've never seen one of these things before, so I guess I'd really like to see a couple of examples. And and, and I think, um, at least Galena and, and I definitely, I think, like to research things an awful lot to kind of know um, and not be too vague or, or too precise. I think it would be great if, if you could just get us some examples. Is that possible of what maybe other boards have done? Have they? Sherry Riedemann, City Clerk, we can certainly get that to all of you. Is this last year's? Yeah. Paula Schumacher, Chair. Thank you very much, Sherry. And do we have any other questions or comments or discussion for Holly? Chair, uh, this is Sherry Riedemann, City Clerk. We can share our screen and show you what we had um, as our legislative priority statement last year, if you just want to. And, and again, I'm not suggesting that you move on this item at, you know, 
right now, but at least it can give you a general idea of what we're talking about. Paula Schumacher Chair. Yes, that would be nice. Thank you. Are you able to see it? Yes. This is Sherry mm -hmm. Anthony Clark. And I would say um, I would have to look how other advisory boards have made similar recommendations or if they have. I don't know off the top of my head. My assumption would be that they forward items that they consider important to the commission or, or make recommendations, but but I don't know that for sure. So I'd have to look at exactly how how they've done that. Paula Schumacher chair is this I don't know is this something you could send to us so we could look it over maybe and think about it Sherry Riedemann city clerk of course we'll make sure that we get that to all of you and again I just want to remind everyone that um, these are, this is not the, the type of thing that you would want to dis discuss with three or more of you outside of this meeting if you all decide to make a statement such as this you would want to do it in an open meeting and have that conversation at that time Paula Schumacher chair yes I totally agree Sherry I understand Holly Krebs um, I wanted to add just a couple of other things. Um, Galena had mentioned that she would be interested in being able to see the policy proposal. Um, so on one hand, the um, the Senate bill from last year is pretty comparable to what the AMTA is proposing this year. Um, that, that The bill for this year will not be released until at the earliest um, January of 2021. Um, I have a draft of what they're proposing now, um, but what I would be happy to do is to reach out to the AMTA and ask for the most up-to-date draft, which they were planning on sharing with me anyway. So I would just wanna make sure that whatever I was sharing was something that they were comfortable with sharing publicly. I have it kind of in my back get ready to go if needed that I'm not planning on having it introduced if the if the massage therapy bill is able to keep the exemptions that would allow me to continue practicing I'm I don't love that solution because I don't think that it takes care of the issue of creating loopholes. Um, but I also am not, I'm, I'm also trying to be cooperative with the AMTA um, if they're coming up with a solution that gets massage therapists regulated and allows the rest of us to keep practicing. But as they've said, they can't guarantee that those exemptions will make it through the revisor's office or through the legislative process. And so I am making sure that I'm prepared with a secondary option so that the legislators could see that that's not the only, the only option before them. Um, so the point of all of that being is that I will, um, I'm happy to follow up with the AMTA, get their most recent copy of their, their bill that they're sending to the revisor's office and share that with you as well as sharing my bill, which is a more comprehensive licensing option, um, just so that you have all of that information to review. Um, and as a reminder that the third option that I haven't developed yet, but might be a really good amenable option is to have a uh, an additional requirement in the exemption section that exempted professionals would need to register with the state. Um, I, I haven't been able to find a lot of um, models for that type of language, but it's it's on my back burner. <laughs> So the point being, I'd be happy to get you some more information, especially given that Paula and Galena mentioned that they really appreciate being able to um, do some research and dig into the fine details. Um, and, and if that would help you feel more comfortable in whatever sort of steps you guys might um, take in suggesting a policy recommendation to the city, um, I would like to help support you having the information that you would like for that process. Paula Schumacher Chair. So Holly, what I would really like and uh, is if you could provide us maybe send to uh, Sherry or that uh, a list of other players uh, so that we can hear the different viewpoints 
whether they are similar to yours or uh, in opposition. Because I think what we would really need is to hear some of the different views and, and reasoning, like you said, like for insurance, you know, there might be a slight different take on things, why some people are having loopholes or not, which would help us understand a little bit more what we might want or not want to to recommend, how vague or precise we might, might want to be. And, and if we got a few other people to come and speak, I think that would help us understand uh, a little bit more three-dimensionally or holistically um, the situation. If you wouldn't mind, it could be a big ask. But Chair, this is Sherry Riedemann, City Clerk. What I would recommend is if this is something that you all are interested in discussing, that um, we add it as an agenda item at your next meeting and that it would be advertised this conversation so that any of those parties that wanted to provide comment um, would know that we're having it, having a meeting to discuss this, and then they could attend um, and provide whatever, um, you know, we would have the opportunity for public comment. And then if you're asking um, to have um, those documents from Ms. Krebs, those, that information would be attached to the agenda and would be shared with everyone in that regard for you to consider. Paula Schumacher, Chair. I, I think uh, in this case, Sherry, it, it might be a little bit more difficult because we might be talking about people who are a little, don't have, uh, we don't have as much access to because they might be from national organizations or regional organizations. So we would probably have to do something more like uh, invite them and they might tell us what their availability is. So I, I think we should put it as an ongoing uh, agenda item if well, we'll do a motion for that. But I think that It'll take some time maybe uh, once, if Holly were to provide us for a list, then we'll have a discussion maybe next time on if we want to continue or not, and then who we'd want to invite or not. And then uh, we would have to have, you know, the invitation and then have them accept and all that. So this is probably going to be a long process. <laughs> Holly Krebs, um, I'll just add a couple of pieces to this. So the AMTA, I believe, would be the most relevant organization to have come and speak. Um, and I have um, contact information for uh, their legislative liaison, which I'd be happy to pass on. Um, the other organizations that would be most affected by the proposal that I've put forth are the American Organization of Bodywork Therapies of Asia. Um, which is the Asian Body Work Therapy National Organization, as well as the Reflexology Organization. And I have contacts for legislative liaisons with both of those national organizations. But I also know that because of the pandemic, like the Asian Body Work Association has had to drastically cut back on their legislative resources. And so I was kind of lucky to even be able to get them to review my language and to give me feedback. I think they were doing it a little bit on volunteer basis. Um, and so I I would feel less comfortable asking for their time, um, given that they seem like they are are very much at the you know at the they're 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 strung very thin um, right now. Um, and similarly, the reflexology organization again was was gracious in um, her response to me, um, but I, and I was glad to get that. So I don't know. One of the possibilities would be that I could even forward some of their approval of the language that I've developed as a way of showing that those organizations are comfortable with regulation of their industries. Um, and, and I can provide a little bit of information from both of those. So I, I feel like the AMTA has um, adequate resources to for their legislative liaison to be contacted and possibly come. Um, and then the other organizations, I would love to share some of the information that I've gotten from them without necessarily asking their liaisons uh, for the extra time. Paula Schumacher, Chair. I so before you do that, I think we would need a, um, a motion um, that we wanted to actually um, look into or research a legislative priority statement, whether we're interested in doing that or not. And then if we had that motion, then it wouldn't necessarily mean that we would do it, but just that we would investigate it further. Does anybody have that motion? Um, 
House and District Board member, I think I need to see uh, some some examples of what those are before I would even make a motion that we explore it. So uh, that the PowerPoint that we saw on the screen, I did see I did see briefly that there was uh, a city board about uh, uh, I believe homelessness that was making a a state level recommendation to you know work on that problem. Um, so I w I'd like to see examples yes. of what that, like you were saying earlier, Paula, examples of those statements before uh, I, would be, I would believe that it would be, before I could decide whether it was worth our time to investigate whether it would be, make sense, I don't know, <laughs> um, for us to make a statement at this time, if that, if that makes sense. So I'd like to see some more examples before we make a motion. That is the, the TLDR. Okay, so Paula Schumacher Chair, then I think, uh, we would just want this maybe a motion to have this be our old business for the next meeting that we would come back and just uh, after we've reviewed this and just say a, a review of the legislative priority statements that Sherry's provided. Allison, district or board member. Um, I don't know whether it would be new business or old business, but yeah, if we had some homework between now and then. Um, if Sherry gives us some homework between now and then, we can put it in whatever uh, line we need to. And then at that time, once we've been informed, we can decide if we're going to make a motion to look at doing it ourselves. <laughs> Elena Miller, board member, I know I was, I agree with Allison on, on both points. I'm sitting here trying to think of exactly how to phrase that. And it's like, <laughs> okay, wait, where would we put it? How would we put it? Who, who are we inviting? What are we doing? <laughs> So I'm with her on all accounts on that. <laughs> uh, this is Sherry Riedemann, City Clerk. So um, is there a general consensus that you all want to discuss further? Um, you, um, what is happening at the state level regarding body work? Paula Schumacher, Chair, I think what we're saying is we want to continue discussing legislative priority statements and just look at what they are. And after we do that, so like if next meeting we were to do that and have that opportunity to, to look over the examples you set, then from that we would make uh, another decision whether to proceed or not from that point. Uh, Sherry Reedman, City Clerk. So, from from staff, what is it that you're wanting us to bring to that next meeting? Who are uh, we're not at the point we're wanting right. to have other organizations reaching out to right. organizations to make. Paula Schumacher, Chair. Correct. You've provided us, uh, or I think you were going to send us that uh, that what you provide you showed on the screen momentarily what was the last year's priority statements uh, if you were to just email that to us and then we'll review it just like we had reviewed the um, faqs that you had sent out to us and then um, next meeting i think we would just discuss it thank you paula schumacher chair do we need a motion for that sherry uh no we'll just put this item back on for the Agenda. Okay. Um, and that would be in a month. Yes. Okay. Paula Schumacher Chair, if there isn't any other discussion on this, is there any other new business? Um, uh, if I may um, pipe in for just a minute, Holly Krebs, having served on committees, um, one of the things I'd just like to suggest is that, Polly, you had, you had mentioned that not only seeing the legislative um, policy priorities from the city, but also how committees have provided feedback to the city that helped the city then craft those statements might be helpful. So if there are minutes from a couple of committees whose um, input has led to the uh, those policy priorities that might help guide your process if you were to pursue that. Paula Schumacher Chair, thank you very much. That's great. And thank you for coming in and talking to us today. It was great. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Allison Dishinger, board member. So I guess we are um, uh, uh, directing staff to give us some of those examples to see if it is an appropriate item to consider offering to the commission. Is that correct? Have I 
summed it up right. So that would be really great to see what Holly said, uh, some examples of maybe minutes from committees that actually made uh, recommendations to go into the legislative priority statement by the city commission. And there may be, you know, that time may, you know, we may decide that, you know, 2021 is the year to do it. We may decide that it's not. So uh, we'll continue to discuss that next week once we know more about what they are and how they're done. Paula Schumacher, Chair. Sherry, um, I don't want to put too much of a burden on you to have to, you know, for all of those. I imagine that for each one of those, we could go on the, the internet and find the board meetings that led to those or not? Uh, this is Sherry Reedeman, City Clerk. You certainly could do that, but really what the appropriate thing to be for this to be would be if you're going we're going to bring this back as an item we wouldn't be forwarding you all of that information between now and the next meeting we would be presenting it all to all of you at the same time and the public at the same time and then you would all okay. discuss and decide how you wanted to move forward and so we will have a presentation on this include all of the information that you just discussed just give you some you know direction on how um, that is formed your role as a board how other boards have handled that um, is that, am I missing anything in terms of what your expectations are for when we come back? Paula Schumacher, Chair. No, that sounds great, Sherry. Allison Schinger, board member, that, that sounds perfect. That's exactly what we need. Thank you. Okay. Paula Schumacher, Chair, is there any other new business? I'm not sure if we're going to be able to discuss it now or if it should be a future agenda item, but um, I was approached by a couple of um, um, body workers, and it has to do with how uh, this whole situation and uh, the COVID situation and how it had affected our, our body work community. And this is not by any stretch of the imagination a, a criticism of the city at all, but because we are not regulated by the state, um, there was lots of confusion um, and stress, of course, at this time, but also not really having direction on which way, how to proceed, especially with reopening. And so, uh, Luckily, our, our Facebook group got together and we all kind of helped each other out and had discussions, but not everybody workers on Facebook. So, so that has to be kind of acknowledged. And um, I'm sure people called or body workers called you and asked, well, what do we do? How do we, how do we um, reopen those kinds of things? What do we do? So I was thinking that I, um, it would be great not having a state license like we're not um, they were told they got the they got the information that they were told to 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 act like um, estheticians or hairstylists you know what do they do and it doesn't quite fit our our particular as a practitioner so um, I was wondering about gathering all that information that we got and putting it in uh, uh, someplace useful. I, do, I honestly, I'd, I'd like to think this was the only time that we were going to have a pandemic, but I don't really think that that is honestly um, um, a truth. So, if we had that information already that worked for us and just been able to put our own um, best recommendations together as as uh, um, as board members to be able to pull that together, much like we did the FAQ. Um, that that might be a very useful, um, um, a useful thing to do and uh, and a service to our community. Allison Dishinger, board member. So I would ask Sherry if there has been a precedent in any of the other professions that have advisory boards for what to do during this particular pandemic. Um, none of the other professions I can think of that have boards are in such close contact with human beings uh, for such a long period of time, I don't think. I don't know all the boards, all the people that we regulate. So I would wonder if there was precedent, had been precedent coming from the city to any other profession, because um, I would be interested to know if it is our place as an advisory board to 
give that information or compile that information or not because we don't have that at the state level and all of the professional level all the professional organizations had differing information uh, sherry Reedman, city clerk so when we received those calls um, we did not advise our advice was to contact the um, douglas county health department because um, they are the ones who have the statutory authority um, to make um, those health orders. And so we certainly wouldn't want to direct someone on something that we don't understand, um, that we don't, um, and that we don't regulate, and that we don't have the authority to discuss. So um, to my knowledge, um, my staff was not directed to advise people to follow any sort of health orders. They were directed to the Douglas County Health Department because that is the appropriate entity to make recommendations on those things. Um, Paula Schumacher, Chair. Sherry, um, does that mean that uh, in our FAQs we could add something for them, anybody who calls in and goes to the website, to go to the Douglas County Health Association to say, hey, if you're wondering about when to open or how to deal with COVID, please contact the Douglas County Health Services. And then, um, not speaking for anybody else, but maybe this other group on Facebook could work with the Douglas County Health Department on uh, uh, what kind of response or whatever their particular situation. Uh, Sherry Reedman, City Clerk, we could certainly um, add something that directs them, you know, that provides that direction that that's who they need to right. contact. I would, if this, um, I would um, want to discuss with the city attorney's office if this board wanted to make some sort of statement or direction on how to safely um, work. Uh, within the health orders, I would wanna have that conversation with them before you all moved forward on anything like that. Any professional organization outside of this advisory board that wanted to put something like that together, we would have no say over, obviously. Um, but I, that would be a conversation I would wanna have first before I advise you whether that was an appropriate thing for you to do. Paula Schumacher, Chair. but. Um having something to say to go to the Douglas County Health Services, that would be fine. Yes, and I believe on our okay. 19 page on our website, not specifically related to this licensure, I think we do have that, but I would have to look, but I don't see, I do not believe there would be any issue with, with having a link to where they can, how to contact the health department. Allison Dishinger, board member, I, I think you're right, Sherry, if it is showing up somewhere else on the current Lawrence, Kansas website, it would not be uh, an issue or we wouldn't have to talk to the lawyers in order to say, for more information about practicing safely in COVID-19, see Douglas County Health Department or however it's sta already stated on the website. And I, we have had people, I, I've had people individually ask me as an as a individual massage therapist, who do I talk to? And I say, Douglas County Health Department, so. Paula Schumacher, Chair, do we need a, um, a motion or does somebody want to volunteer to add a FAQ for this or Sherry, can we just do it? Yeah, this is Sherry Reedman, City Clerk. We're still, we've um, been a little bit behind, but we still have other items on the fact sheet that we need to update. So we'll make that a priority based on the direction that you gave last time to get those done and add um, information on, on where to go for COVID-19. So that's, that's not an issue. We can do that at your direction. And, and then it's just a conversation of whether you want to have um, have that as a future discussion item as well. Paula Schumacher, Chair. Marta, I don't know if that really addresses, uh, it, does it do an initial address of the issue for temporary and then we keep it on or what would you like to do? Um, Marta Schwartz, uh, Vice Chair. Uh, of course, it's, it's, it's a good start. Um, It's, it doesn't satisfy the complete need for people to know what to do. I know it's a very 
I know there's a lot of people that haven't even started their practice again, understandably, and there's a lot of people that have just left their practice because it was overwhelming. Um, so I, I just actually just, I, I wanted to bring this up, but I, um, that's a good start, but it doesn't satisfy the entire need to have um, something that uh, would be, um, uh, would be reasonable enough for somebody to, to uh, be able to begin their practice again. So um, because we're not regulated, like uh, hairstylists and estheticians and things, there, there isn't, uh, I, I need something a little bit more concrete than just going to the Douglas Health Department. Um, so, and that's how I was able to open my practice is because I, it took me a week to figure out how I was gonna do it, but I read everything everybody brought to the table on the Facebook group, and I went over it even with my husband, and we just really kinda planned as best as possible and talked to the people that I was sharing the space with. So we got on board together. So, I mean, it was quite an endeavor uh, to do that, and um, so I wanted to make it simpler for people in the future so it wasn't, it's, it's going to be stressful, but it's not so much of a heavy lift. So anyway, because it is doable if you're comfortable. So anyway, it's a beginning, but it's not exactly what I want. And maybe this board is not, not going to be um, part of that. Uh, um, maybe it's enough to say the health department for this board, but until we get uh, regulated, through a statewide regulation, maybe that changes things, but I just, um, I just, I just need to have something a little bit more uh, solid. Yeah, Paula Schumacher, chair. I, I think, Marta, my feeling is that the only thing that we can do as a board, really, without an awful lot of delay and a lot more discussion, really, is to. Uh, put up the FAQ and send them to D Douglas County Health Department. However, I feel that the other piece of it is that um, you as professionals, right, could contact the Douglas County Health Department and feed them information about what to give to people when they call. I mean, I think that we can't post that information on the board, but if we push people to the health department, then you as professionals could could help them with more information and how they could help people that contact them. I think that might be where we are. Marta Schwartz, Austin Austin Schwartz thank you very much. That's good. Allison Fischinger, board member. Um, that's pretty much what I was thinking. The gap in information for therapists when they're wondering what to do comes from uh, the health department and uh, uh, Paula, thank you. It might be a good idea for individual therapists who have been able to reopen their practice to just talk to the health department directly and say, would you like some wording and some ideas of how, you know, when people call you to say, well, what do I do? Um, we have some successful examples in the community of those people would step up and say, here's what I am doing. Here's an example of what I am doing. And everybody's doing things a little differently too. So that is a big discussion that's not for this board, but I appreciate that all of the, that, that is where the gap is and it is not our purview to provide that information. But if uh, coming around the other side of prof professionals did provide it to the health department and they were able to disseminate it that, that way, that would be helpful to the profession and would help take the pressure off of the city and this board and you know everybody who can't give that information. So that's that's a good way to to get the information to the right people. Paula Schumacher, Chair Sherry, uh, if some group of professionals were to want together and have a meeting with the Douglas County Health Department, um, would these people? I mean, would uh, would Galena, Marta, Allison, would they have to make sure that only two of them showed up? Uh, Sherry Riedemann, City Clerk, yes. There could be no more than two commissioners. More than two board members, I apologize, would be considered a quorum and it would be a meeting and should be advertised and should occur in a public forum. Okay. Okay. So I think 
uh, Paula Schumacher, Chair. I think we just need a, um, I don't know, if we need a, a motion to add the new FAQ about contacting or no, we're good. All right, any other discussion on this or any other new business? Allison Dishingle, board member, I do want to thank you, Marta, for bringing that up because that is a, a very identifiable gap uh, that affects our profession very strongly. So I'm hoping that some professionals will step forward and, uh, and talk to the health department directly to give them some wording. Thank you for bringing it up. You're welcome. I'm Paula Schumacher, Chair. Marta, I think that was great. And I'm sure a lot of people could really use that, especially, uh, you know, how hard it's hitting all the businesses. And I'm sure, you know, massage therapy in particular. I mean, I was so excited when I found out my massage therapist was, you know, up and running again. So that's great. It looks like we made it to the end of our agenda items. If we um, have nothing else to discuss, uh, we'd have a motion for adjournment. Chair, this is Sherry Reedeman, City Clerk. Can I just ask really quick, so in terms of future agenda items, we discussed earlier um, when Ms. Krebs made her presentation of bringing that back. Is there anything else that you all would want to see on a future agenda? That Paula Schumacher Chair, I don't have any other meet items. Um, does anybody else have anything? It looks like uh, nobody has any other items. Paula Schumacher Chair. <laughs> are, we, are we ready to adjourn? Alina Miller, board member, I would like to thank the city team for putting this together for some of us. I know I've been, I feel ill in July and have been sick ever since. We're not sure why, but that's okay. So being able to be at home is really important to me, although I'd love to be with all of you in person. Um, however, right now, this is my safe space. <laughs> so eventually we'll be together and could eventually do hugs at the end of ours. I always look forward to our <laughs> hugs at the end of the meeting. Um, Marta, thank you for bringing up that too. I just wanted to say that before we ended the meeting on having the discussion about our profession and our industry is vital to all of us. And I know that. Um, and so um, I would like to honor all of that. And uh, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn for today. <laughs> I second that. Marta Schwartz, Chair, Vice Chair, I second that. Oh, man, here comes the difficult part. I have to get everybody to, uh, let's see, agree. All right, so we're going to vote on the motion to adjourn. Uh, Marta, how do you vote? Hi. Aye or nay, I guess are the choices. <laughs> Galena, how do you vote? Galena Miller, board member, aye. <clears throat> Allison, how do you vote? Allison Dishinger, board member, aye. And I miss hugging everybody. <laughs> Paula Schumacher, aye. And the motion is carried uh, unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. See Thank you next time. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thank Marta. You guys have a great Good afternoon. To see you. You too. Have a great weekend. You too.